Hello and welcome to a quick intro to Houdini. What I want to build with you today is this low poly version of an old master's painting. And um, while doing so, I'm going to show you some common techniques that you will use in Houdini when working in Houdini. So what I did was uh, I went on Wikimedia and found this painting of a girl in a picture frame by Rembrandt. And I really appreciate it for its metaness. And I really like the idea that the girl is protruding from the image frame. So really nice. So I downloaded this as a JPEG and that's all I need to get started. So let's head into Houdini. So inside of Houdini, the thing I want to do is I want to treat this image um, as geometry. So first thing I'm going to do is create a geometry node. And um, I do that by hitting tab. And this menu appears while hovering over this view here. And this view here is basically my main node tree. So that's where I built my scenes and everything. So again, I hit tab. And then I'm going to type geo. And I see a geometry node appear, hit enter, hit enter a second time, and drop down that node. I want to dive into that node, I hit enter again. And now I am inside that node and I see, resize that here, it loads up a file, which is this, I'm going to delete that. And within that geometry node, most of my operations will happen. And the nodes that I will drop down here are called SOPs and SOPs is short for surface operators. So I'm going to drop down a grid SOP in order to create a plane like that here. And I want to make that plane the size of my image. So let me check. So my image is 664 pixels by 900 pixels. So back in Houdini, I will make this 664 by 900. Right. Zoom out a bit. And that's quite big in Houdini units. So let me just make that a bit smaller. So divided by 100. And there we go. That's my grid. Next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that um, my points on the grid are scattered uniformly so that I get squares and not these rectangles. And I could do that by um, entering my amount of points that I want in each direction here manually. For example, 4 by 900 and then zoom in a bit. Ah, that was the wrong way around. So like this. Exactly. So I have square grid now. Um, however, as soon as I'm going to change the dimensions of that grid, um, those numbers are going to change as well. And I can automate that. I can automate that by going here into the size box, right clicking on it, and say copy parameter. And I want that parameter to be regarded down here. So I'm going to delete that, right click in here and say paste copied relative reference. However, as soon as I click on here, I can see the actual number it puts in here. And that's the seven because it rounds up those 6.64. That's a bit too little. So let's increase that by 100 by just writing a star 100. So that multiplies this value by 100. And now I've got my 664. So I'm going to just copy that expression, put it in here, and only exchange this size x parameter, which relates to that parameter, with the size y parameter, which is this one here. So again, I have my square grid, and I can change that dimension to whatever I like, and the grid stays perfectly square. Nice. Next thing I need to do is to actually bring in my image. And um, what I'd like to do is to write the color values out of my image onto the points in that grid. And the way I'm going to do that is with a sub called attrib from map. So I will hook that up to that sub and highlight it. And I will see this flipped test grid. And the reason why it's flipped is the grid sub generates points starting from this corner and going to that corner. So exactly the opposite direction as we have it in an image. But there's a quick fix for that. I'm just going to go in the attrib from map node, go to image settings and invert the V coordinate. So now we have a proper orientation. So let's bring up the actual image. And in order to do that, I just need to exchange this file path. I'm just gonna select my JPEG that I downloaded. Here I have it. Just gonna right click on that light symbol here. Now left, ah, right click. There we go. And disable specular. I'm gonna go into shading and um, choose flat shading so I can see the image properly. 
So now what I've done actually is I've written those color values from pixels onto the points that I've generated. So in order to generate those triangles, I'll first have to generate some corner points for those triangles that I want to use. I do not want to use those regular points that I have in a grid, but I want them to be kind of chaotic. And the way I'm going to generate those chaotic points is by a scatter node. Hook them up here and put that and highlight it. I'm just going to hit D here over the viewport and go into geometry and increase my point size here so we can see what's happening. So the scatter stop did two things. On the one hand, it randomly placed points on that geometry that I selected. So it randomly placed points on that grid. On the other hand, it also transferred the color attribute to that point. So they automatically get colored in the underlying color. So let's directly um, try to create triangles out of that. And that is done by the triangulate stop. The triangulate 2D stop, that is. And I'm going to highlight that. By the way, the triangulate 2D SOP, as the 2D implicates, only works in two dimensions, which doesn't bother us because we just have a two-dimensional grid here. But when you want to triangulate like three-dimensional shapes, you need to use other SOPs. Okay, so what we see here um, are two things. On the one hand, um, we kind of generated the triangles, and let me show you when I go to the wire shading. So we have those um, triangles here, actually. But what's happening is Houdini tries to be clever and um, Houdini takes the color values from the edge points, from the corner points of the triangles, and it tries to interpolate between those corners. So it's, it's blending those colors. And we don't want that because we don't want the gradient look. We want a solid look. So I'm going to take care of that with an attribute promotes up. And what that does is it takes an attribute, so a value that's written on a point, and transfers it to another geometry entity. So that sounds quite complicated, but what it does in effect is it takes those values from the corner points of a triangle and transfers them onto the triangle itself. So it, it merges them into a single value when it transfers them onto the triangle. So let's wire that up, highlight it. And the attribute we want to transfer is the color attribute. And, and the color attribute in Houdini is always called CD. So that's color diffuse. And we want to transfer it from a point to the triangle. And triangles and polygons in Houdini are always primitives. So what I have now is that SOP just averaging out the three corner points into a single value and writing that on the polygon. Several things I notice with that image. On the one hand, the corners are kind of rounded and fuzzy. And that comes from the scatter node not generating points on the corners because, I mean, the probability of really hitting the corners is really low with a random generator. So what I'm going to do first is manually create those four corner points so we keep the rectangular image. I'm going to do that by just copying those two nodes here, pasting them again. Here they are. And first thing I want to do is make sure these both grids always have the same size. So I will use those sizes here, right click on them, say copy parameter to drive the size of that grid. Just highlight that, delete it and say, oop, delete it, right click and say paste copied relative references. Gonna do that for this dimension as well and exchange the X with the Y dimension. So now as soon as I change the size of that grid, the size of that grid changes as well. What I want then is um, delete those expressions just by right clicking on them and say delete channels, delete channels, and only give them two rows, two columns so that it generates only four points. Let me just switch to that, and that, and highlight that so I have only those four points generated now. I'm going to transfer the color attributes from the image onto those four points and then what I'd like to do is delete that center polygon. It's not really necessary um, for our setup but I wanted to keep it clean so let's just delete it. And the way you delete primitives polygons that is in Houdini is of course with the add SOP. Just got to get used to some quirks in Houdini so drop down an add SOP wire that up and say delete geometry, but keep the points. Highlight that and I have only my points left now. 
So what I can do now is merge those four points with the scattered points. I'm gonna do that with a merge sub. Wire in the scatter, wire in the corner points, and output that to the triangulate sub. And now I have my rectangular image. Okay, that's the first thing I needed to fix. Second thing is, I think the triangles look kind of boring because they're too uniform. And that comes from the scatter sub. What the scatter sub tries to do is to guess a density from the geometry. So the density tells it where to scatter many points, where to scatter very little points. And as we don't have a density attribute specified yet, the scatter sub just assumes the density is uniform across the whole plane. So let's give it a density attribute. Um, we do that by checking the density attribute here. And my points don't have one yet that's called density. However, we could try and use the color, the brightness of the color in order to drive the density. So the image will get more points where it's brighter. So let's just do that by inputting CD. Again, CD is the color diffuse. And we see scatter sub now scatters rather many points on the bright areas and uh, less points in the darker areas. So let's see how that looks. That is better. Another thing that kind of bugs me is um, that those triangles are kind of uniformly shaped. And that is because the scatter sub tries to push them apart and to space them apart uniformly. And it's called relaxation. So when I switch that off, my distribution gets um, really chaotic, which I quite like. So you can see the difference here. So this is one way we could transfer an image into a polygonized version of itself, just by procedurally taking its brightness values to scatter points. And um, in the scatter sub up here, when you still have it selected, you can dial in the amount of um, corner points that you want to have. And I really like those low poly looks, very low polyish looks, but you can dial it up as well and get more detailed looks. The downside of us generating the point distribution, so telling Houdini where to scatter the points procedurally is that it's kind of hard to art direct. I mean, we could put in another map here and um, drive the distribution by brightness values in that second map. But most of the time, what you like is to directly paint into the image and tell it where to scatter the points. And luckily, that's done pretty easy in Houdini. And let me just disable the scatter node here, move those up a bit and drop down a so-called spray paint node. Just hook it up here. So that takes some time to compute. I'm just going to highlight it. So what I'm going to do now is I first need to switch my tool to the, I think it's the handle. Yeah, exactly. And what I can do now, what spray paint allows me to do is just to scatter points and just like with a with an airbrush, paint them onto a surface. So I'm just going to go here. And scatter some points on them. And instead of generating the scatter points for the triangles, procedurally with a scatter stop, I just painted them in manually. So let's go down here, merge the points again. Let's just switch the handle tool. So that's my points that I just painted plus those four corner points. Just going to dive them into the triangulate sub and again promote the attribute value. And I now have a hand painted version of my image. So um, that's a technique I really enjoy and really like. And just with a normal brush tool, you can adjust the way the spray paint puts points on the surface um, by dialing in those values here, like the spray rate. So it controls the density and the amount it puts down or the relaxation. So how it spaces apart those points. You can adjust your painting here. So now what we have here is a 2D triangulated version of our old master's painting. And in the next part, I am going to show you how to turn that into a 3D representation of itself. So stay tuned and see you soon. Cheers, guys.